Hello again everyone, Edwin Learn back once again. In this YouTube astrological segment, I'm going to be giving you my Virgo July 2020 horoscope forecast part one of two. And yes, this does apply and pertain to the sun, moon, and ascendant. Anyway, first thing up is, well, as far as July goes, well, the sun will be in Cancer from the 1st until the 22nd. So the 11th house is what will be emphasized and highlighted. At this time, there could be a strong concentration of energy, focus, and attention on one's goals, aspirations, friends, uh, social networking, social media, one's future groups, clubs, organizations, uh, even, st even stepchildren, if applicable. Now, thing about this is, given that this is Cancerian energy, a lot of this may be done with a lot of uh, tenacity, a lot of devotion, dedication. There might be a strong focus on nurturing uh, one's friends at this time and one's goals. And really, uh, it could also be a focus on perhaps giving safety and security uh, to friends, to acquaintances at this time. And also, too, there could also be a focus and, and concentration of energy and attention on some Cancerian uh, aspirations such as cooking or doing some sort of culinary work, uh, restaurant work, home improvement, renovation, roofing, siding, uh, being a historian, perhaps something connected with nostalgia or family. And uh, anyway, and also too, it could be a focus on one's future connected with the family as well. If you're, if you're a person that doesn't have much of a family, you haven't really in terms of creating your family, uh, procreation, having having a significant other wife and kids, this could be a time where you might home in on that. So anyway, next thing up. Well, the sun will be in Leo as far as July goes from the 22nd until the 31st. So the 12th house is what will be emphasized and highlighted. At this time, there could be a strong concentration of energy, focus, and attention on one's limitations, restrictions, uh, hidden adversary, solitude, seclusion, even self-undoing, an aunt or an uncle. It could even be uh, matters that are connected with secret sorrows as well. And you have to, uh, and given that this is the, uh, I mean, you're talking about, and even given it's a 12th house, and this is Leo energy, this could be a focus on even uh, maybe some limitations that are connected with being gregarious or extroverted and uh and even sometimes a focus on even how arrogance maybe worse is tied into one's self undoing uh keep in mind too that the sun rules either the left or the right eye depending on gender and uh you're talking about the 12th house of limitations this could be where there may be some kind of eye limitation or a situation that might be limited or restricted with one of the eyes and it could be something that that could be very fine is something like like a burning sensation since we are talking about the zodiac sign leo or it could be something on a fairly large scale considering leo doesn't do anything in small doses as far as leo energy goes now it could also shine the light so to speak on a leo hidden adversary in some cases it could be a leo sun moon or ascendant person or simply one that embodies leo characteristics Anyway, next thing up, well, there's going to be a lunar eclipse in Capricorn on July 5th. So the fifth house is what will be emphasized and highlighted at this time. Well, in some cases, this could manifest, I mean, number of ways. This could be, keep in mind, people, that a lunar, for those that don't know, lunar eclipse in astrology is basically like an amplified or intensified full moon. It's like a regular full moon, but except it could have more of, more of a prodigious impact, that the impact could be stronger, and it might be life-altering, it could be very monumental uh, event can take place uh, when you're talking about a lunar eclipse in contrast to a regular full moon in astrology. Now, in some cases, this could be about the end of a, uh, of a Capricorn love 
Uh, in some cases, it could be a Capricorn Sun Moon or Ascendant person or simply one that embodies Capricorn traits. And the difference between this, again, as this example goes in contrast to a regular full moon, uh, you're talking about a lunar eclipse. This could be about a situation with a loved one that you may have had for a very protracted period. When you're talking about a full, a regular full moon, and I would, I see that or perceive this being something, a love situation in this case, that would be maybe be a little definitely uh, of a lesser period and maybe this one and when you're talking about a lunar eclipse it's more it's more of a life altering thing it's I think too it's less chance of going back to something once you've ended it now the thing about this too is it could also reflect where uh, you're talking about lunar eclipses and I mean can be where a prominent female or, or somebody a female that played an integral role in your life scheme they depart at this time and it could be some it could be a lover at this time or, or somebody that may have been very prominent in your fun amusement or enjoyment uh, this could be also to when you're talking about lunar eclipse it could be very powerful unveiling or revelation of something in some cases this could be a very powerful revelation or unveiling of a person that was uh, that might have been uh, could be a lover or a child, someone prominent in your hobbies, your fun amusement, your enjoyment. Maybe it was a little somewhat tyrannical or very cold or ruthless. And, it, and maybe this is the time when it really comes out. And this is something, or a very undemonstrative person. Might have been something you may not have been cognizant of before, that you were very oblivious to before, but now is the time when it could uh, be revealed and also could be a time too where you might become more cognizant in some cases this could be about um, applying maybe under maybe being more business savvy than maybe you thought you were previously and applying that toward investments remember that the fifth house is connected with investments things of a speculative uh, nature it could be a time too where you might really become very strongly tired, exasperated, full of, so to speak, a very restricting or limited uh, love situation or, or, or something where your fun, your amusement, enjoyment was very inhibited. And this is the time where enough is enough. And it might have gone on for a very protracted period since, this, since we're talking about a lunar eclipse in contrast to a regular uh, full moon. And it might be the time where you take the bull by the horn, so to speak, and say, it's time for me to actually start enjoying things if you hadn't done so previously anyway next thing up there's going to be a new moon in cancer on july 20th so the 11th house is what will be emphasized and highlighted now this could manifest in a number of ways uh some cases this could simply be about embarking on a cancerian goal or aspiration it could be something with uh cooking or culinary work restaurant work Something uh, associated with home or modeling, renovation, roofing, being a historian, something that involves rescuing. It could be working as a lifeguard, anything that could be uh, cancerian related. It might simply be a time too where you begin to nurture your friends, your acquaintances, even stepchildren, if you hadn't done so uh, previously. And you're talking about, again, new moon and cancer and the 11th house being emphasized and highlighted. This could be a time, too, where you might be, uh, it could be the beginning of showing a lot of dedication, devotion, and tenacity uh, toward 11th house matters. It might be matters that are connected uh, with social media or trying to make money from a business if you do have one uh, at this time. In some cases, this could uh, you might be welcoming a new Cancerian stepchild uh, at this time, or it could be one that simply uh, embodies Cancerian characteristics. It could be, in some cases, it could be a Cancer Sun Moon or Ascendant person, or simply one that embodies Cancerian traits. So, anyway, well, the next thing up, uh, well, Mercury will be in Cancer, so the 11th house is what will be emphasized and highlighted. Now, at this time, you might find yourself 
uh, with a strong ability to extemporize in terms of your communications with friends, uh, with acquaintances. You might feel like at this time you might be more contemplative regarding your future, regarding your goals, and you might find yourself too communicating more about Cancerian goals and aspirations such as maybe doing something with laundry work or working in cooking, culinary work, working in restaurant or, or in the food, something with food, something that involves rescuing like working as a lifeguard, uh, starting something connected with nostalgia or being a historian and it could also be a time too where you might be reminiscing uh, with people more so at this time, Cancerian energy, you're talking about Mercury and Cancer, can be about thinking about uh, the past, and you might find yourself reminiscing about uh, past experiences with your friends, with your acquaintances, with things that were connected with goals and aspirations, uh, matters that happen uh, with social media, social networking. And remember that Mercury can also, it's not just about communication, it's also can be connected with siblings, cousins, neighbors. It could be a time too where Cancerian uh, siblings, cousins, or neighbors, they might be Cancer, Sun, Moon, or Ascendant people, or simply ones that embody Cancerian traits. They might figure more prominently in your future, your goals, your aspirations, perhaps even money made from a business in some cases, uh, matters with social media, social networking, and your future uh, as well. So anyway, hold on a moment, people. Well, last but not least, Venus will be in Gemini still, so the 10th house is what will be emphasized and highlighted. Now, at this time, you might find yourself, uh, Virgo, maybe spending as fast as you earn, perhaps on trying to gain more notoriety and, and exposure or recognition. It could be where this could also manifest in the enjoyment of multitasking, versatility in matters uh, with your career at this time and gaining maybe some recognition in connection with this. Now, if you're unattached at this time, Virgo, you may connect with a Gemini, Sun, Moon, or Ascendant person or simply one that embodies a uh, Gemini traits. It could be somebody that figures prominently in your stature in life, your career, notoriety, recognition excuse me, your reputation, your public image, and it might also be at a time too, this could be about the enjoyment of uh, really, or, or just this, this could be about peaceful communications uh, with people that are, again, prominent in your career. Uh, it could be it could be authority figures, uh, people that might have, uh, if somebody, if you have like a promoter, somebody that's played a role in your, your, your public image, your reputation, gain your, your, in terms of notoriety, uh, perhaps, and maybe even the enjoyment of Gemini things with 10th house people, such as maybe doing some, um, maybe some kind of variety puzzle book or playing haiku or lumosity, things of mental challenge, uh, chess, and enjoying those things with 10th house people uh, at this time. And also could be about a superficial connection too at this time uh, for yourself at this time too, Virgo, which might... Um, which it could be somebody that might be, I mean, given that it's the 10th house, it could be an older person or an authority figure, somebody in the government, somebody maybe some 10th house profession, uh, such as government or, the, or politics. So anyway, people, that'll conclude this YouTube astrological segment. Until next time, people, Edwin Lawrence saying stay well.